Hey, what's going on, people? I was doing a little research this morning, and I came across this article written in 2012. It's harder for Americans to climb from the lower rungs. The article resonated with me because I came from the lower rungs. And I was like, what's going on? So I read the article, I absorbed it, and I put it away, and I came back to it. These are my thoughts. One, the average American, and I'm talking about poor people too, is better off than roughly 80% of the rest of the world in terms of medicine, education, yes, even education, standard of living, housing, and freedoms, personal freedoms that you're granted as a citizen of the United States. So essentially, you're already at a high level, even though you may feel differently based on your life circumstances compared to the person in the Philippines who, and this is before the tragic uh, ec the tragic event that recently had, but they had rolling blackouts all the time. There, there's all kinds of, there's parts of the world where Wi-Fi is not reliable. There's a lot of things that we take for granted that are not in the rest of the world. So long story short is the upward mobility of the rest of the world is easier because a lot of us have kind of hit a ceiling and you're going to see your standard of living in the United States stagnate. It's not going to get any better unless you make it better. It used to be an automatic byproduct of a robust economy, innovation, all the wonderful things that were going on in America from pretty much 1920 up to about 1985. And then things changed and st there's still great things going on. But I was having a conversation with someone this morning. There's education and there's information. You have many people who are very educated, master's degree, PhD even. They're making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. I'm not saying that's bad. You have someone with information who's a billionaire. It's information. Education is learning a set of facts, statistics, history. It's important, but information is even more important. The right information. That's the thing that people are missing, because. I looked at the article and I was able to come up with these thoughts because I know a few things. I've traveled the world. I have been in other countries. I have seen how people live. There are people right now, there's some little girl in a village in Mexico who's going down this steep ravine to get a bucket of water to take back up to the family so they have water for the day. And this trek that happens every day, she could break a leg, she could catch something, she can get bit by an animal. This is her daily reality. In 2014, there's some kid in the desert right now, burning his ass up. There, you have it really, really good. Now, to really push past how to climb from the lower rungs, because I figured it out for myself and I could share my information for you. You have to get education and information and learn how to use both. And when I say education, it is far beyond getting a degree. Right now, for many corporations, the price of admission is a degree. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just like you can't even apply unless you have a degree. And for me, and this may sound very classist, elitist, but getting yourself an eighty to $100,000 a year, of student loan debt to get a thirty to forty-five thousand dollar job that tops out very quickly, to me is asinine. But that's just me. That's just me. A lot of people are doing it because of the narrative of American culture. And essentially, you have to sit down and ask yourself a few questions. First of all, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you have a clue? Because see, this, that, this is the problem. People want to follow the follower to do with someone else. Well, my grandparents got married at 21 and they bought a house and they live in the country and they've been married 30 years. So that was their life. What's yours? At this point in history, you have the ability to define your life like no other point in history. Man, woman, black, white, Asian. At no point in history could you wake up and say, what do I want to be when I grow up and have the freedom and the resources, if you know where to look, 
to do those things. Call me crazy, but these are the best of times. And many people are looking at it the wrong way. They're looking at, well, the glass is half full, the glass is half empty. I am looking at, there is no glass. Therefore, I can build a decanter, I can build a pitcher, I can build a water producing plant. Fuck a glass. I am looking at making my own sandbox. And if you know how glass is made, you know it's made from sand. Think about it. So you have that ability to define your life. And when you define your life, the mobility is a byproduct of taking time out to figure out you. You can have anything. If you want midgets that eat meatloaf on Thursdays to come over and rub your feet, you can have it. <laughs> if you want that, you can have it. This is the United States of America. Shoot, in some other countries, that happens every Wednesday. But you have the ability to make that definition. And that is the cornerstone of your mobility. Once you figure out all of this other stuff, the byproducts come. Upward mobility, money, social prestige. That comes, but... Many people are putting the cart before the horse and they're wondering why it's not going anywhere because you're not thinking of your life plan. In Hustler University, the Hustler Mindset Project, is key. Figure out your life plan. If you want to be a stay-at-home mommy, figure out a way to do it. Don't go, well, you know, since I'm a woman... I'm 32 and I need to do all this stuff on my, you know, on my list. Check this off. Go to Paris. Fuck a guy in Turkey. And then at the age of 30. Really? I, I read this stuff because I have a friend right now who doesn't have kids. And I've told her, I said, you're going to regret it because I think you'll make an excellent mother. But, you know, she is on that. I am woman and I need to do X, Y, and Z. And at the end of the day, I can tell you. From, you know, being very sick myself, from watching close people, you know, people that are close to me die, that when you really boil it down, this life is about experiences. And experiences come from the people that you know and surround yourself by. Money does not buy happiness. It does solve a lot of problems. Don't get it twisted. I'll straighten that out. But you get to a point where the experiences matter and the people matter. And once again, money kind of helps with that because once you define who you are, what you want to do, and provide service for you know your fellow carbon-based life forms, you might get a ridiculous amount of money that just flows through your life. But if you go out chasing money without the benefit of service, without the benefit of trying to help people or creating something that solves problems or something like that. It's a very frustrating money chase, you know, just chasing money, just chasing money, just chasing money. When you define you, when you define your purpose, money finds you. Money will pop up in your life in the strangest places. It, it, it is weird. It is great. But when you define you, when you work on, see, because this is the thing, many people are trying to solve internal problems with external solutions, and it's never going to work. If you've got, you need open heart surgery, and they put, you know, until we get that technology, they got to crack your chest, go in there, cut those vessels out, bypass, so you can live. Because the problem is internal, they have to go in internally to fix it. See, you need an internal solution for an internal problem. Most people, I'm unhappy, so I'm going to go party. I'm unhappy. I'm going to get shopping therapy. I'm unhappy. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to do drugs. I'm unhappy. The unhappiness stems from the inside. And there's all the stuff that's just like, yeah, like, this should help. This should help. This should help. And it's very important. It doesn't help. And they're like, it's... I must be messed up or fucked up beyond repair. No, you have the wrong information. I'll tell you, when I was in the storage auction business, one of the happiest days of my life, and this is going to sound very trite, but I don't care. I bought a unit in Tucker, Tucker, Georgia. It was that public storage, the one that's right there on the left. 
you go further down, there's like two public stores, just the one that was outside of 285 and there's one actually inside of 285. It was the one that was outside of 285. One of the clampets was there. Nice bedroom set. You could see it. I could, I could see the mattress, footboard, headboard, and one of the dressers. I mean, one of the nightstands. And there was other stuff in there. And I ended up paying like four fifty for it. I sold a big screen television for 800 bucks. It was a win. It wasn't the money. That unit belonged to an ex-girlfriend that had disappointed me. And I got to go through this unit. And I got to read the journal of her life because you start to decipher stuff when you see medical bills, you see bills, you see like unopened bills. That's like, I don't have any money. I don't even want to look at that shit. And I got to see what had happened to her life. I found out exactly what happened with us. And it was just like, oh, I didn't hate her. You know, I actually felt sorry for her, but it's that information that fills in the gaps. It's that information that's going to go, oh, and I was just sitting there. So I solved a personal mystery and I made a lot of money. And I was just sitting there like, this is the bestest job in the world. Not the best, the bestest job in the world. And that was my source of happiness, getting all of this information, buying units, finding out all this stuff about people. It was just my high. So I didn't make a lot of money in the store auction business because I was chasing money. I got a lot of money out of the store auction business because I was chasing experiences. The money was a byproduct. The more experiences I had, the more money that came. So for you to experience upward mobility as an American, and I'm going to tell you, the opportunities right now are off the heezy. I'm on just, I have to settle myself down and focus because there are so many opportunities. I was like, okay, I, I need to pull back. I mean, because you, you see the experimentation of the chain, because you know, it's like, you know, how to make a living without the job. And the default is, we're just going with Hustle University. That's going to be the portal. Everyone comes in there, and then you'll be exposed to the other stuff. And it's just like, I, I have to pull back on the rent because there's so much opportunity. And I was like, why do I see this opportunity? And a few people I know, and other people are just like, man, you, you, you walk on the street and it's like, hey, how's your life? How's things going? Do you think things are good for you? And a lot of people are like, no, they're not that good. And it's the information. I have information that other people don't have. They could get it if they would read, <laughs> research, and stop watching so much damn television. It's the information. It's the information that gives me confidence in the future. It's the information that I'm like, I'm not going to be okay in the future. Um, I'm not just going to do well. I'm going to be, I'm going to thrive on an exceptional level. I see more information, more experiences, therefore more money in the future than I've ever made in my life. And I was back there and I was just like, wow, this is incredible. And I'm not saying this to go, oh, you know, Glenn, that's going to make a lot of money in the future. No, 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 no. You're, you're missing the point if that was your immediate Stand, you know, take away from this video. If that was your me, you're just a dumbass because you're so miserable. You can't look at something beautiful without envy and jealousy, which is gonna kill your little janky ass. You're gonna need to let that shit go. You need to learn how to look at the world the way it is versus the way that you want it to be, and stop feeling so fucking sorry for yourself that anytime anyone says anything is grand or beautiful, then you get jealous and start feeling bad about your janky ass. That is all horrible way to live. That's a terrible way to live. And if that's your response, and I've been trying to drive you motherfuckers off this channel because you are just stupid. Okay, that was my rant. But seriously, you got to be able to source your own happiness. And when you get your own happiness, all of these things that happen in the world that are not good are not going to rock your internal world. Like, you know, with the thing with the affordable health care, like the people go Obamacare, and the idiots in Congress with holding the country hostage with, I looked at it, I took their information in, and I was like, you know what? They're gonna raise the debt ceiling, because they have to. This is all political posturing. The Affordable Health Care Act, it's law, it's going through. It's fucked up right now, I gotta admit, there's a lot of issues with it, and at some point, it will work out. Now, how much control do I have over those two events that I just discussed? None. None. Not really. I mean, seriously. None. Absolutely none. So why am I going to invest an inordinate amount of energy 
bitching and whining about some shit that I don't have any control and completely ignoring the G-verse, which I have 100% control over, to talk about and feel bad about some shit I have no control over. That's why when I see people, it, I'm going to tell you something. When you get happy, you'll bring happy people to you. When you're ex, you know, ecstatic, you're happy about life, you'll bring those type of people to you. The other side, flip mode is, you will create some seriously ugly energy with folks who can't stand your ass because why are you so happy? Right? It's fucking six o'clock in the morning. Why are you so happy? It's the morning. I'm alive, bitch. That's a reason enough to be happy. I'm telling you. You have to get that internal world together so the other things come into play because Upward mobility for the people with the right information is at an all-time high. You have people with the right information coming out of college, going to the right company, and working 10 years and becoming and making 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, and being set for life after 10 years of extreme hard work. See, I'm not going to say, oh, they get no. They're probably working 120 hours, 140 hours a week. A week. I mean, they're they're burning it. But the payoff is there if their health isn't the road to the point that they die before they get to the end of their line. But upward mobility for those with the right information is at an all time high. And no time in history could you sit at home, watch YouTube, go visit a blog, see a post on Facebook. Figure out a few things, connect a few dots, and within a year have your own company that is giving you enough money to not just support you, but to support you in style. At no point in history has this ever happened for the masses. And the reason that many people are not taking advantage of this information is cultural narratives. Now, you've heard this old saying about, you know, Grandma was in the kitchen and she was cooking this ham and before she put the ham in the pan she would cut off both ends and then the daughter did it and then the granddaughter did it then one day the great great granddaughter said mom why do you cut off the ends and she said well mom did it and she calls her mom why'd you cut off the ends and well great grandma did it and you get to great grandma and she's like why'd you cut off the ends well the pan was too little that happens all of the time People do stuff because it was culturally acceptable and someone else did it with little regard of, hey, should I be doing that for me? Does it make sense for me? Because that's the power of cultural narratives. It's endemic. It happens all of the time. You could be doing some shit that does make no sense for your life because it's a cultural habit and it's socially sanctioned. And that's why people aren't getting the information because they're living on those cultural narratives. And they're very powerful. And when you go against them, the backlash can be swift and ugly. But when you go against them and you get past the backlash, your life can be grand and beautiful. So what do you want? It's all a choice. So if you want to be upperly mobile, you can have it. If you don't, that's your choice. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.